Hello everyone, welcome to a foreigner farming in the Philippines. So, let's see here. We only got one upside down hand. I chatted with Mike a little bit this morning about uh, these pits he's got here for Azola. If I don't drop it all. All right, so look, I had expected it to be dead because when I looked at it last week, it was not healthy at all. It seems, you know, down in this little enclave here, uh, the Azola seems to be doing better. Uh, out there on the pit, not so much. And I think this is probably just because it gets more shade right here. I think the problem with this is only a shade. But, having said that, I brought another full bucket of Azola. So, I'm going to put that in here. And I brought a mix of Azola and duckweed. And I'm going to put most of this in here and I'm going to take some to the fish. So, um, I didn't have any, any just, uh, just duckweed to put in, because we had talked about just putting the duckweed in and forgetting about the azola. But I don't have any ponds, any ponds, any tanks that have just uh, duckweed in them. So, uh, I was getting a mix. The reason that I brought azola only the first time was I do have one of those tanks has azola in it only. For some reason, I don't know. This is how things worked out. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna go up here and put the rest of this uh, in where the fish are and check the fish. See how the little ponds are doing up here. Well, the fish have definitely overwhelmed this. The greeny the greenery that was in here. There's almost no Kang Kong left. So They'll probably really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, look at them. They're already hitting it. I guess I should have brought some Kang Kong as well. But I didn't even think about it. I'm just going to sit down here and park. And They've built a little uh, bench here. So I'm just going to sit down here and watch the fish for a minute. The water is kind of a, a grayish color. It's not, you know, it's not because there's too much biomass in it. It would be green were that the case. I think the problem with this is it doesn't have, probably doesn't have enough biomass. Yep, they're getting right after that. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't asked Nick or Giselle if they've uh, taken any of the fish out of here. I would doubt it because they're, well, they're just not growing. I don't think they've been fed much. Because uh, they were an inch and a half, two inches long when they were put in this little pond. And I think that was, well, geez, how long ago was that? Six months ago? So, if they were caged and properly fed, they would already be to 500 grams, four or 500 grams. And these here look like they've, well, they have grown. I can see them. So, they've probably quadrupled in mass, and they're a couple inches longer. They're probably at the 10 per kilo. 
They're 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 probably a hundred grams. And man, that'd be pushing it. But they do like that uh, the azola and the duckweed. That's why I was hopeful that that would take down there, and uh, they would have a steady supply. Because those two little uh, uh, pits they've got dug there would be enough to keep these little fish here in a supply of uh, either a Zola or duckweed or a combination thereof. Because I think we, I think we put 50 in here, or was it 100? I can't remember. We put 50 or 100 in here, uh, basically fingerlings. And I'm almost sure that they haven't uh, taken any out. But they haven't grown much either. I, I you know, I, th I think it was 100. Uh, I, I had thought that that was too many uh, for this small pond. It's only like maybe, I don't know, maybe a 10-foot circle would, would get it all. It's kind of oblong. It's maybe 12 feet by 8 feet. But they've de definitely eaten all the natural food. Just that little bit of King Kong there is all that's left. And you can tell, I, don't, I can tell, uh, if it's being over foraged because you don't see any roots on it. Because they prefer the roots. They eat the roots first. Um, I guess that's because it's tender and it's new growth. Um, and they've eaten all the roots off of that. I was, uh, well, you want to be careful not to put too much King Kong or too much Azola or duckweed in it either. You don't want to, you don't want to cover more than like 50% of the, of the area of your, of the surface area of the pond because it, um, there won't be enough oxygen exchange and it'll just suffocate everything that's in there. You know, even though this pond isn't isn't aerated, just the wind motion over the surface of the water uh, gives it a bit of uh, air exchange, and that's enough. You know, there's no aeration in lakes, but there's, you know, depending on the size, there's millions of fish in it, and that's just because of the uh, the air going over the surface of the water. Well, the same thing here in this little tiny pond, but you've got to really be conscious of your biomass and the coverage of the surface area. Yeah, they're just eating that like it's nobody's business. They're enjoying that. I'll ask Nick if he can check because we, you know, we're probably going to be leaving in the 20-30 minutes. And I don't think we're going to, I don't think, we, we don't have any reason to come back anytime soon. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Nick if he can check this this afternoon and give me a guess as to how much of this is remaining. The way they're eating it, I would, I would anticipate they'll have all of this eaten in a couple hours. So I put about a kilo in wet weight. So only, you know, a couple hundred grams dry weight. But a couple hundred grams of, you know, uh, um, a kilo of this wet and, a, you know, like a double handful of fish food would be probably too much for these fish on a daily basis. It wouldn't take much. I don't know how many are in here. Uh, I don't think they experienced any mortality. But if these fish were fed, you could probably, if they were fed something, you don't necessarily have to, has to be all uh, sacked feed. But if they were fed something and you had a hundred fish in this pond, uh, you could take three or four out probably once or twice a week and uh, never run out of fish because tilapia are that way and for a family that's enough well they're really 
they're getting after down there. Alrighty, thank you everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.